Hi everybody. Welcome to Here to See. This is the channel where we share pearls of wisdom, nuggets of knowledge, understanding of the difficult, and to impart instructions for a better life. And today I'm going to share a vision and an encounter that I had with God many years ago. I've retold this story several times and it's always been appreciated. So I hope you all appreciate it as well. I'm going to take you back to 2001. I was working at that time around Dayton, Ohio. Uh, it was kind of a temporary uh, duty location. My wife was still located on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Um, my mother, who was in her late 80s at the time, she uh, lived in Cortland, Ohio, about three and a half hours away from where I was staying. And, and as I had done many times, at the end of the day, on Friday, I left out and went headed up to Ohio and I'm just puttering along as usual listening to the radio or doing whatever I think I got to the point where I was singing some praise songs and whatnot about an hour out from where I get off the interstate because you see I get off the interstate at an exit 44, which puts me on Route 5, that takes me to Cortland, Ohio. And suddenly I had this impression. And you see, God doesn't always speak audibly. In this case, it's imparted knowledge. He basically communicates with my brain as best I can exp explain that. But why should he use verbal language? He can certainly communicate straight to our brain. It's a lot more efficient. No room for, for misunderstanding. And, and you'll see why. I mean, he said, Blair, you're going to get off exit 44 as always. And when you do, I want you to go to the gas station Go into the building, find the red-haired lady, and tell her I love her. Well, you would think that I'd be excited that the Lord had called me to an important task. But immediately, I was just aghast. And the Lord said to me, Blair, do you honestly think you thought this up on your own? Furthermore, do you honestly think the evil one would give you such a suggestion? Let's be reasonable, Blair. You know it's me, and you know what I want you to do. So, do it. And I must say, I'm embarrassed to say, my palms were sweating. I was so nervous, I'm sure my heartbeat was up, and I'm still an hour away from exit 44. And I'm just rolling over in my mind, what am I going to do when I get to exit 44? What am I going to do? Well, the Lord didn't give me any peace or any comfort about it. He had imparted his instruction. And the closer I got, the more nervous I got. I really did. Didn't have a cell phone back in those days. So there wasn't anybody to call to distract myself. So at any rate, when I got off the interstate, I went to the gas station across the road. 
I went to the gas station across the road. I got out and I filled up my tank. And while I was doing that, I'm looking across the street, which was about a four-lane highway, quite large. I'm looking across this, the road and looking for this red-haired woman. Well, naturally, it was too far away. I couldn't really see her if she was there. At this point, I'm sure I'm muttering to myself and to the Lord saying, Oh, Lord, what am I going to do? Do I really have to do this thing and whatnot? He didn't say a word. He didn't. But I got in back in my car, and I after I paid for my gas, naturally, and I went across the road to that gas station. And I very reluctantly got out of my car, and I went into that gas station looking for the red-haired woman. I went up and down the aisles looking for this red-haired woman, hoping to God I didn't find her, and I didn't. She wasn't in there. So I went out the door, and I got in the car, and I said, Well, Lord, the red-haired woman is not in the store. And he said, well, of course not. She's not there now. And I said, oh, Lord, I'm, I'm so sorry to disappoint you. I really didn't mean to disappoint you. And he said, I knew you wouldn't do it. Oh, those words hit me so hard. I knew you wouldn't do it. And I said, I'm sorry, Lord. And he didn't coddle me or say anything. He didn't give me a good thou faithful servant or, oh, you idiot, what's wrong with you? He didn't say anything. Oh, I was so impacted by that. You can imagine that was on my mind for many days and many weeks. And one day, my wife had traveled up to Ohio to spend some time with me. And we were out for a drive and was stopped at this gas station. And I'm pumping gas, and the Lord said, Look at that man over at that gas pump. Give him $10 now. And I must tell you, I didn't hesitate this time. I about ripped my wallet out of my pants. I ran over to that man and I said, Sir, I'm sorry to bother you, but the Lord told me to give you $10. And the man said, Praise God! And the man explained to me that his pregnant wife in the passenger seat of the car was about to give birth. They were on the way to the hospital. He didn't have a dime for gas. He was pumping gas on faith alone. And thank the Lord that he gave me the lesson so that he knew that when it was time, I would listen and obey. And what a blessing it was, and what a blessing it's been to follow the Lord ever since. So I just recommend to you, stop and listen to the Lord. He's got something to tell you. He certainly does. And when the enemy tries to tell you, oh, that voice in your head, that is not God, you just tell him he's under your feet and you listen to the Lord because he loves you and he has things for you to do. I sure hope you love this story. I love to tell it every time and I'm humbled every time. But please like and subscribe. There's more of these coming. I assure you there's more of these pearls of wisdom, nuggets of knowledge. 
the understanding of the difficult and imparting instruction for a better life. God bless. See you next time.